lists. Everybody's favorite subject, of course. Everyone loves making lists. Not, not me. There are two kinds of people in the world. Those who write lists and those who don't. If you are someone who loves writing lists, then just get ready for list galore because we're gonna be going through so many different lists I can't even begin to describe. I have piles on my desk right here right now. If you are someone who doesn't like making lists, well, this video is made just for you. As a former non-lister who has now been made well aware of the powers of listing, I even made a list of all the lists that I would need for this episode. I am here to tell you guys that you need lists. You need them in your movies. If you're making movies, you need lists. So I thought it would be fun to just go through all the different kinds of lists that we have used for productions. I went through all of my old files and my old computer documents and I just pulled out like every kind of list that I could possibly find and we're just gonna go through them. Have all you listers got your pens out? Get ready to list down the kinds of lists that I have for you. So I thought we'd just kind of go in order of making a project, you know, just talking about the lists as you come to them in the project. Let's do this. So the first list that you're gonna come across, even before you reach pre-production really, is an idea list and it looks something like this. I can get it in here, which is you're having a brainstorming meeting and people are having all these different ideas and blah, 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 and then you feel like there's just too many, so you start to write them down so you won't forget. So this is basically what an idea look, looks like. This is actually a rather neat one for me. I usually have like doodles in the corner and all sorts of other things. Um, just kind of scribbled and scribbling out things and adding different thoughts. But that's what an idea list is like. Not, not really very complicated. You take your idea list, and depending on the complexity of the script that you're working on, you can make an outline, or if you feel really inspired and just don't want to make another list, then you just move straight from your idea list to a script. After you have your first draft of your script, the second kind of list that you're going to have is a, I don't know what you'd call this, but a critiquing list, maybe? It's, very similar, but you read your script to other people or you to ask them to read it and give feedback. And you basically just jot down all the feedback that they're giving you. This one was, um, let's see, this one is for Weeping Willow, actually, the script. We would go over the script and each scene I would block out just kind of, there's the scene number, you know, what, what we thought was really holding that scene back, what really needed to change with it. This is another one where it wasn't really scene based, it was just kind of this character needs this and we need to fix this and this is a weak plot point and where the heck did this weapon come from and that sort of thing. It's just jotting down all the problems that need to be fixed. Then you take this and use that to edit your script and you know 10 drafts later hopefully you should have a done script. Now we're gonna get into real pre-production. So this is from Weeping Willow also, and it's basically just a locations list. Um, I took this out with us while we were scouting. As we were finding locations that would work for this scene or that scene, I would just write it down so that later we remember. As you can see, there's quite a few scenes in Weeping Willow, even though the whole thing takes place in one forest. We did have to keep track of which area in the forest we were going to film what because that information is very important to know later when you're trying to do scheduling and trying to do um, uh, shot listing so that you can remember what those areas look like and which one belonged to what scene. By the way, this is, again, I was writing this as we were tramping through the woods, so this becomes a much more official list that I will show you. The next list on my pile, we do a lot of fight choreography. So this is a choreography sheet. Um, let's see. This is for countdown. As you can see, it's just writing down all the different choreography moves as um, Lizzie and Josiah were choreographing um, for this. And so countdown is like a seven minute short film, I think. Don't quote me on that. Um, so you can see how many moves you know, that sort of project is. It's several, several pages. It's a long list and they memorized all of this, which is cool. So when you, if you're doing fight choreography, you always wanna write it down. Um, for some projects, we were doing choreography over a span of like five, six weeks. And for Countdown, we could only get together with everybody like once or twice before 
we got on location, we were actually shooting, it was really important to write everything down so we didn't forget in all of those weeks as they were passing and also so all of the performers could have access to this, you know, to take this home or I, it was online so they could look at it online and they could practice their part and they wouldn't ever forget so they wouldn't ever practice incorrectly. Very important. That's like the biggest benefit of lists, I think, is it just allows a lot of information to be communicated to a lot of people. So the bigger production you have, the more people are involved, the more lists you're going to need because more people are going to need to know more information. Okay, on the producing side of pre-production, this is a cast and crew contact sheet. That's what it looks like. There's the cast and there's the crew. And basically it just has um, for the cast, you know, who they're playing, their full name, and also email. And then on here, it's their position, their name, and email. We also add everyone's phone numbers to this. So whoever is in charge of time is in charge of organizing all the people on set, producer or assistant director, they will have this sheet with them so that at any given moment they could call anyone on the sheet, they can know everyone's names. And the emails are very important because again, like with the choreography sheet, we were sending this out to everyone after a practice session or a choreography session. So we needed to be able to contact all of that. So this is probably one of the first things that you create as a producer or as a director, um, just to have everyone's information in the same place so you don't have to like scroll through messages and messages where people gave you their email, you know weeks and weeks ago and you forgot what it was and yeah just put it in a list it'll make your life easier the cast and crew contact sheet is also really good for productions where everybody doesn't know each other because everybody will get a copy of this and they can see the names of who's doing what and who's playing whom and it just it's really nice for everyone to have access to that information when you're the center of a production all of the information is just rolling around in your head and it's easy to forget that not everybody knows what the heck is going on half the time you know they don't have all that information so as much information as you can give to everybody as possible the better the smoother your production is gonna go so this is the more official version of that location list um, this is usually created uh, as the locations are being locked so if there's a blank space in this column that's the actual locations I think yeah if there's a blank space in there it's very easy to see that oops we don't have a location for that scene we still need to do some work or we haven't decided on that yet so put the locations in here as you're locking them so you can keep track of what still needs to be done um, this is pulled straight from the script the, these are the scene headings that are in the script so this is what it says in the script, this is what it is in real life, and these are just short descriptions of the scenes in the script. Because again, as a director or writer, you probably have the script in your head really well, but if somebody else is making the schedule, if someone else needs to see where the locations are, they probably don't know what those scenes are very well. So these are not, you know, entirely doing the job of telling you what's happening in that scene. So you write down just a quick little summary about what's in that scene so everyone can follow along and all the information is in one place. And now we get to our very faithful companion, which is along with us on this ride throughout the entire project, and that is the to-do list. I will be honest with you guys, this is not authentic to-do list. I recreated this one because as you can see, it's really just scribbles on a page. We don't keep these for records. We cross out all the things and then throw it in the trash. So I just kind of recreated one. This is what it would be like. There's things on here of finding props, um, organizing costumes, charge our walkie talkies, um, make sure that everyone has um, the time that they're supposed to be on set. It's stuff like that where all these different logistical things that need to happen and it's very important that you don't forget any of them. But to-do lists are great, you know, they're really great for keeping you on track for making sure you don't forget anything and also um, making sure that you think everything through. As you're writing a to-do list down, you know, you're writing down the five things that you were afraid you were going to forget and then you remember 20 more that you were supposed to remember but already forgot. That's probably one of the strongest benefits of a list is making sure you're thinking through everything. When it's all up in your head, it's just like, oh yeah, I got that, oh yeah, we'll remember that. And then when you run up against 
against a problem on set, you don't really have any tools or any ideas exactly of what to do with that. In making to-do lists, you gotta think through everything. You gotta think through things that might go wrong so that you can have backup plans. Moving on. This is a props list. It's also got costumes on it and locations. So this is for the art department. And I believe this one is for our new short film, which hasn't come out yet. So how you create this list is you go through the whole script and you highlight every time a prop is mentioned and then you list them all. And that way, you know, you won't forget and you won't get to that one scene and like, oops, oh yeah, we needed a cell phone. Does anyone have a cell phone? Can we borrow it? Okay. You also list the locations on there so you can think through anything you might be needing for the locations, any set deck that you need to bring. Um, we didn't have any set deck on this one because again, we were just out in the woods. Um, it was mostly props. I don't actually have a copy of this one because again, we don't keep all of these lists because most of them are just scribbles on paper. But another list that you're going to need to start making in pre-production is a to bring list. The morning of the first day of production, you gotta load the car up, you gotta get all the food, costumes, props, camera gear, rain gear, and you gotta bring all of your different lists that you need for production. The morning of the first day of production is not the time to think through what you need to bring. It's, that will, you're, you're, no. Your life will be very stressful if you do it that way. As you're creating these other lists, it's really good to start creating a, a bring list right off. Especially if you're starting out as a filmmaker. For us, all the different people really take care of their own departments. One person is in charge of making sure all the camera gear is got, and one another person is in charge of making sure we have all the costumes. But if it's just you doing a project and you're doing absolutely everything, and it's one of your first projects, again, lists, to bring lists, that's a great way to think through the entire day. You end up remembering that, oh yeah, people need to sit down when they're in the middle of the woods. We should bring those little fold out camping chairs. Oh yeah, it's gonna be really cold. Let's get some hand warmers or let's see if we can bring a heater or something like that. The physical act of writing a to bring list will help you think through everything and there won't be any gaps. The next list in pre-production. Oh my gosh, guys, we're still in pre-production. This is the food list. And again, this is a recreation of a normal food list for us because we just don't keep these. We don't need to keep these. This is um, mapping it out for a three-day shoot. You can see day one, day two, day three. And so depending on how long your shoot is and if you're feeding your casting crew for all three meals, this is if you were feeding for all three meals. This is just figuring out what we're gonna eat when and having a plan. This is crafty, so these are just gonna be snacks that are on set for anyone to eat at any moment when they're hungry. And you can never forget things like water bottles and sometimes we like to get juice because that's super fun. Use this list to create your food shopping list and you also use it to help schedule out when you're eating what, what needs to be packed for each day. Once you've written it down, anyone can look at this list. You don't have to be in charge of the food. Even if you're planning it, somebody else, we need the second day lunch box. Can you go find it? Something else that you need to be putting on this list is stuff like napkins, paper plates, trash bags, all that's gonna be important. And if you don't have it on hand, then you're gonna need to go buy some. All right, lastly in pre-production is all oh, the budget everybody's favorite piece of paper. Um, this one is also from Weeping Willow. Wow. We didn't have like a budget for Weeping Willow. We kind of decided about how much we wanted to spend, but that project just got really big really fast. We ended up spending more than we were thinking. So we just settled on keeping track of what we were spending. So at the end of the project, we could actually know how much we had spent and you know, figure out where that money was coming from. We just separate it up into different categories because we're gonna be spending different um, amounts of money at different times on different categories. And it also helps you know later when you wanna see, okay, how much does it take to make a movie like that? As you're getting more and more into production and you're gonna start spending money, it is very important that you keep track of it and you know where that money is coming from. 
I just want to give a major thank you to everyone who is still watching this channel. I realized looking back on this year that I've uploaded a grand total of two videos this entire year, which that's awesome, but I promise that I have two really good excuses. The first one is we were moving and not only were we moving, it took us like six months to move. I'm not kidding. We started moving in February, I feel like, and we weren't even in our house until August. We were just in this weird transitionary stage where nothing was happening. So that's why I wasn't uploading for all of that time. And then right after that was my wedding. So that's why I haven't been uploading since then either. But I'm all settled now in my new house, ready for Christmas and full of inspiration for videos, for projects. There are like three or four projects that I'm trying to get off the ground right now. We got some big plans for um, Rungzohu in general. Don't be afraid that this channel is gonna die. It's not, we're coming back after our very long, almost year long break. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Real quick before you click out of this video, I just want to tell you I recently started a Facebook group called Homegrown Filmmakers. It's a group for young homeschool filmmakers to connect with each other, to communicate with each other. We share scripts on there, we get feedback from each other. It's a really great place to get inspired and to just connect with other young people who have similar backgrounds and similar values. So if you'd like to check that out, it's called Homegrown Filmmakers and I'd love for you to join.